It may not look like much, but this is ground zero for one of the world's fastest growing sports. Here on the outskirts of East London, a Swedish entrepreneur is building the city's biggest centre for the hottest new thing in recreational sport, paddle. So this is going to be the centre court and then we have another five courts all the way down to the main entrance over there. We started looking for opportunities back in 2019. And then after Covid, uh, we, we got our first club up, uh, which is Bristol. The Rocket Paddle Bristol is the largest paddle club in the country, holding 14 courts. It's a very, very nice club. So we opened up that club and now we're focusing a little bit more on London. So now we're trying to surround London. It's usually one of the bottlenecks in scaling paddle is to get clubs and premises like this. But once you have the proper clubs up, the landowners will find us rather than us finding them and trying to convince them to change the use. I think if you open up in a very uh, well populated area where, where there's lots of experience from paddle and a strong demand already, you could be breaking profits earlier. Whereas when you start in new cities that when we opened up in Bristol, for example, people didn't really understand or know about paddle. So it took a couple of extra months to get them coming and trying it out and coming back. Usually you should be able to be in the money from an operational perspective within three to six months. Paddle was invented in the 1960s by a Mexican businessman who didn't have enough space to build a tennis court at his house in Acapulco. Instead, he designed a smaller enclosed court, which gave rise to a new pursuit mixing elements of tennis and squash. Paddle went on to become a huge hit in Spain, Argentina and a handful of other places around the world. Typically played in doubles, paddle has been gaining popularity for being sociable but easy to pick up. It uses tennis scoring but has a glass wall for returning shots, as in squash. Now, investors are looking for the next big opportunity, with the UK, the US, France and Germany in focus. Globally, the game is estimated to be worth around 2 billion euros a year, but is forecast to treble in size over the next three years. Paddle's an interesting sport right now. I think it is growing quite quickly. The pace of change in terms of paddle and the business model of paddle is changing quite quickly. Obviously you have COVID as an inflection point where people were working from home and wanted to socialize, have fun, compete a little bit. So that's where a sport like paddle can come into play quite easily. I think we're at an early stage when it comes to the growth of paddle in the UK, the US, some of these emerging markets. I think you're starting to see this post COVID boom of wanting to socialize, wanting to exercise in a way that isn't necessarily just going to the gym anymore. One of the big challenges for paddle advocates is spreading the word about a sport many have never heard of. But Sandy and Tom Farquharson saw the potential early on and set up the Paddle School, an online video platform to teach people how to play and how to improve their game. Understanding the back glass and getting yourself in a good position to hit is one of the more difficult areas of paddle. Just a normal flat ball. So paddle is a mixture of tennis and squash. It's similar scoring to tennis, but they use different rackets and lower pressured balls. So the racket is smaller. It's often described as a beach bat and therefore your contact is a lot closer to your hand. Also, the court is a lot shorter than a tennis court, for example. And the more you play, the more you realize that it's quite a different sport from tennis and squash. It kind of sits on its own. Well, the great thing about paddle is that the serve is technically easier than tennis. So to start with paddle, it's an underarm serve. You play the ball cross court and that is how simple it is to start the point in paddle. And having taught lots and lots of adult tennis players and, and adult paddle players, it's amazing that in paddle you can literally start the first day and play some points, whereas in tennis you would need lessons in order to be able to serve. So initially I started the, the video content online really to help my own group of students. I was in Dubai, I had a small group of students and they were asking me the same questions over and over again and, and there was no content in English. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about how to return the ball that comes off that side glass with slice. Tip number three is recognize your opponent's serving technique. I was really trying to help my students play the game, but I was starting to see through the analytics that you know a lot of the Nordic countries in Sweden were, were really taking it up and watching a lot of those videos. And initially it was teaching technique and the rules and the basics, but as the, the channel improved and, and grew, there were more and more questions and therefore more and more titles and topics for me to select really. It's not just recreational paddle that is gaining attention. 
Investors have been putting money into professional tours, leagues and cup competitions, including the likes of Qatar Sports Investment, owner of French football club Paris Saint-Germain, Daily Mail publisher DMG Ventures, and the parent company of the New York Yankees baseball team. Big names from the world of sport are also throwing their weight behind paddle. So when you think about institutional investment, that is looking for those returns on a sport like paddle, returns on their investment, this is a high growth opportunity for them. But there's also the other aspect of it, of individuals that play tennis potentially, or other celebrities, athletes, that just want to be involved in a growing game that are looking at paddle as another growth opportunity for them, for their brand, and also to inspire the next generation. In London's Canary Wharf, a major international finance centre, a project backed by Spotify co-founder Martin Lorenzen is hoping to tap into growing demand to play paddle among white-collar workers. So we're actually standing on top of 15 metres of scaffold. The place we're on was supposed to become a skyscraper, but in a post-pandemic world where there's not as much as a need of offices, we had the opportunity to reuse the land to build a paddle club. Me, I'm originally from uh, Sweden. I grew up there and I uh, discovered the game four or five years ago. Uh, I played it and I, during one of my trips back, back, to, to back home and I really fell in love with the game. But then I had to try to play the game, continued picking it up here in London, but there were very few courts and booking them was close to impossible. So th that's where the idea came to, to mind of maybe I should get involved in this uh, business. The reaction since we launched has been really, really good. I was expecting us to get busy, but maybe not this quickly onwards. Our prime times after 4 p.m. is pretty much booked out every single day. Our weekends are pretty much booked out as well. But the mornings and afternoons requires a bit more of a community to, to fill those hours. But the uptake has been amazing. So I think it's one of our responsibilities as, as a club in the location where we are to educate people about paddle. The UK is still a very early emerging market in paddle and a lot of people don't know what it is, they've never played it. So what we do is we, we, we do a run of lots of introduction to paddle uh, sessions where people can come and try it out for, for one session and learn the basic rules and then from there be ready to play a game. Soon we will also be running junior academies to even get the kids involved and build a bit of a grassroots uh, sport. Investors looking to ride the paddle wave face a number of challenges. Space is hard to come by, planning restrictions can be tough to navigate, and the pool of existing players in new markets like the US and the UK is still relatively small. But with the number of courts globally expected to almost double by the end of 2026, many more people should soon get the chance to pick up a bat and try their hand at one of the world's fastest growing sports.